Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm tutorial series. We're on episode 70, how about that? Uh, last episode was 69 and I failed to even mention it. Um, so we're quite far into our tutorial series at this point. And honestly, it's thanks to you beautiful people. So here we have another turret. This one is in a pretty good position. There does not appear to be any light inside of the room. So what we'll do, turn off the flashlight. Hallway is dark, but I'm gonna go a little overboard and make sure we're safe here. I'm gonna destroy all the closest lights. In fact, close this entirely. So we're in the dark here. We should be safe to step in. Okay, we're, we're just gonna, what, what do we have in our hands? We have the SIG. We're gonna just step forward a little bit. I didn't mark where the turret was. Okay, let's back off, turn on the flashlight. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six down on the thing. Hostile detected. Why does it keep saying hostile detected when we're in the dark? I'm really confused and concerned about that. We've discussed this multiple times in the last couple episodes. How far can we see? One, two, three, four. Step forward one. I'd really like to be able to see it when we shoot at it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's right here. I'd really like to be within vision range of it. Let's take a step forward, see what happens. Uh, I did save right before we started this episode, so let's do it. You can see me. Now you say hostile detected, but you already said hostile detected. Why is it saying it twice? Hmm. Whatever, it can see us. We don't want to be here. So we'll step back. Let's uh, try shooting it in the dark. What? What just happened? Oh, my display blinked. I'm confused as well because it's showing that we can get better aim, but we're actually not getting better aim. I don't know what's going on with that. And I don't know a great way of dealing with it. If we had, do we ever pick up any flares or anything? We could throw a flare at it, but like it's weird because if we throw a flare at it, we're gonna be exposed to it. I have dark vision. I mean, I have night vision on my character and we have nine perception. I thought we could see a little further than this in the dark. I thought with those two things, nine perception and, and night vision. I thought you could get in range enough to see them, but they wouldn't be able to see you. Hey, internet, this is me as the editor. I just wanted to pop in and explain a little bit what is going on with our character. We noticed that the turrets were able to see us from further away than they're supposed to. I thought this was a bug. It, 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 it seems that certain locations are being lit up even though they're displayed as very dark. So at one point we walk in and the turret can see us from like 15 tiles away, even though we're in the dark. That is what is happening. As far as I can tell, the area is lit up, even though it's displayed as very dark. Additionally, I struggled a lot to figure out why my vision radius was smaller because we only have a vision radius of four when we go to go look at the turrets, which is the same distance that the turrets can see in the dark. But when we had dealt with them upstairs, we actually had a vision radius of five. Even though we were inside, even though we were far away from the outside world, we were still getting a bonus from the extra light of being outside at night. So for some reason, when we entered the, and killed that first turret in the lab, we were able to see five tiles, even though we should only be able to see four tiles. And so this led to a lot of confusion with me. I was really kind of frustrated that this was happening. We, at one point, we get shot by the turret even though we're in the darkness and it's a whole thing. And I thought, you know, it was just a mess of me kind of being frustrated and complaining and not understanding. And I thought, you know, I'll cut a lot of that out. I'll just give a little voiceover and explain what happened. And then uh, we'll just jump to when the footage gets back to normal. So. Um, that is what happened. I'm going to cut out a huge chunk of what we're dealing with. So later in the episode, if I say something like, hey, if anyone knows why this happened, a dev team, if you're watching, help me out what's going on. Um, don't, don't worry about that. It's already kind of been explained to me. 
Um, and based on some of the debugging stuff, it looks like we're being in illuminated tiles, even though it's not displayed as illuminated. What I will say is that it's really important for you as the player to be aware of that because it means that you can often be in positions where you think you're in the safe darkness and in reality you are not. Additionally, because we only have a radius of four, we actually cannot really reliably shoot the turrets because our skills are so low and shooting into the darkness that we can't see, we can't really guarantee a kill and so it becomes much more dangerous. So. Our initial tactics of just flash the flashlight, shoot the turret from the darkness has some hurdles to it. And I just thought I would pop in and mention it. So if there's any weird commentary about them not, you know, acting right, or if you hear me complain about it, that is what happened. And I'm just going to cut the majority of that out. So it's probably going to be a short episode as well. So uh, thanks for bearing with me and I'll pass you back to me as we move on out of this turret room. I really can't think of any other reason. Anyway, anyway, so we don't need to be here um, because of the turrets. We don't want to deal with that. Um, there's just, I mean, I would like to go down here. We can obviously go through without it being an issue um, as long as it doesn't shoot us from the dark again. So as long as we stay away from the light here, we should be able to check the exteriors. Okay, so the only exit here is from this side. Okay, and it's dark in here. If this were lit up, the turret would get a chance to shoot at us. So it is a little dangerous to do that. But we're going to just move through the rotten corn. Awesome. Sorry about that, Internet. I know we wasted a bunch of time trying to pin that down. But I really like understanding things and really get frustrated when I don't understand things. So something's been smashing up this area. So we're going to keep an eye out for whatever that might be. Be cautious here because there's so many open doorways. Don't want to bump into a turret here. So I'm going to go just carefully. It looks like this whole area is flooded. That's pretty interesting. I don't think I've really seen that before. Um, we're going to clear the area. Then we'll check for if there's anything else that we might want to mess with. We're not going to loot while we're trying to cautiously navigate. Where is the enemy that's doing all this smashing? Nowhere. Okay. So that's weird. I guess it was just uh, maybe generated this way, but that's a bit peculiar. Safety glasses are a good pickup. If you've never had welding goggles, you can use them to make your own welding goggles. More rotten food. Check the books, of course. Lab journals will take all of them because they will uh, give us some mutagen crafting recipes. We probably won't get to that point um, to where we're crafting our own mutagen because it requires some specialized tools which can uh, take a really long time to find. So I don't often uh, go through the, the rigmarole of being able to craft my own mutagen. It's just almost never worth it. I don't like the mutagen system in Cataclysm very much. Uh, mutation system. So I don't often mutate that much. I don't know what Metasoft does. I got to imagine it's for the auto dock. So we'll take it just because. We'll peek down here. Oh good. Another, another secret um, special room. Let's talk about Royal Jelly. So here we picked up some Royal Jelly. Royal Jelly is, um, I believe comes from bees, right? In like real life, Royal Jelly is a thing. And it's like what the queen bee makes or something. But in Cataclysm, Royal Jelly is a specific thing that you can eat and it will cure a lot of what is wrong with you in the game. So like if you have a cold, you can eat a Royal Jelly and it will cure your cold. Um, if you have the flu, it will cure the flu, that kind of stuff. I'm not sure if it works for infection or not. I gotta imagine it probably does. So basically, if you have a health malice that you're concerned about, a lot of times you can eat royal jelly and it will heal you. This also appears as non-royal jelly items. So this specifically was royal jelly. This is just raw royal jelly. You can also find certain food items that have been coated in royal jelly. Um, I can't think of what they're called off the top of my head, but you might find like some pork slices coated in royal jelly. And if you eat those, you will also get the effect of being being cured of a lot of things. So it's usually good to pick up royal jelly when you find it. It is something that I almost never use because I know how valuable it is. So I'm always reluctant to use it. So here we found another secured area. Like I said before, they will always kind of appear this way with a terminal and a locked door. So let's check what it is. 
it unfortunately is another prisoner containment. Um, and as we discussed, those are probably the least valuable of all the special rooms. There's no other doorways here. So what we're going to do is just leave uh, and head back up here. Hopefully not get shot by that turret from the darkness. Um, and yeah, we've at this point pretty much fully explored this floor of the lab. Unfortunately, there's not a lot here. We skipped the fungal rooms, which could very well lead to more special rooms if we cleared them out. I really don't want to go traipsing through them uh, if I don't have to. I suppose we probably should just to show off what, you know, happens if, you know, if that turned out to be really bad, we would probably want to illustrate that. Why don't we just go explore the fungal rooms? At this point, uh, the only alternative really is to go down to the next floor. Where are we going? Over here. Uh, we can go this way. Um, so you would normally just descend the next floor and move on. I don't I don't really get why I can't see very far. Um, I'm very concerned about that. We're just going to traipse through the fungus like an idiot. Uh, in fact, we'll use our flashlight again. Just because for all I know, there are still turrets here. Just do some peeking. Peek. Looks like a bunch of terminals. This is a pretty good room if you were looking for... What is this? Shimmering portal. I feel like I shouldn't mess with that. Uh, I actually don't know what this thing does. Let's uh, save again. And uh, go poke it. Step into the shim... Hell yes. It teleported me and it gave me a unfortunate malice. Uh, we are lit up. You're carrying a light and can't hide well. No, that's not the issue. The issue is the little eyeball over my head, which I believe means we have, what's it called? Um, teleglow, I think is what it's called. When you teleport and stuff, it can give you that that malice, um, which I think it does like just random crap to you. Let's just reload our save and not teleport. I didn't think it would just teleport us. I thought it might spawn something cool, um, but I actually don't don't care about teleporting. So, yeah, not gonna do that. What is this thing? I already looked at it, but yeah, I don't want that. Uh, Teleglow can do a variety of bad things, like. Teleport you, change your stats, uh, just really not good stuff you don't really want to mess with. Plunger and ammonia. Nah. So this, hello turret, uh, yep, was not being cautious, and now we've been exposed to a turret. Once again, we'll turn off our light, and we can barely see. We have, oh, we, we had temporary light blindness as a result of, uh, um, having our flashlight on. I don't get why my vision radius is so small. I wish I understood this. I just don't get it. Um, so obviously we can't really deal with these turrets at the moment. I'm wondering if they changed it to where 9 perception is not good enough to get increased uh, night vision. I don't really know how to look up that change, but uh, if someone knows what's going on, let me know, please. And we'll just look down here and see what else is going on. Some stairs, great. Still looking for more of those rooms. Just a little containment room, nothing really of value there. Okay, a little conference room, nothing really of value here. More kennels, we've already seen these. Just check down here. Okay, uh, dissector room with some, nope, just a flask, not any mutagen. No doggos in this kennel. We do hear things to our south. Uh, I guess you probably want to know what that is. It's weird to see. So in the lab, man, this episode's not going so well. Lots of uh, frustration and confusing. Confusion. In the lab, you can find a lot of things. Now, the most dangerous thing you're going to find probably, I would say, are the turrets most of the time because the turrets can basically one-shot you. Most of the other stuff you see... Uh, like as, as avoidable as the turrets are, if you're not being careful, the turrets are by far your biggest enemy. If you are being careful, the robots are the scariest things because the robots are mobile. They're a lot harder to avoid. I opened this door and what we saw was the dispatch. Now the dispatch is a 
I don't remember when I saved last, but we'll open the door and let it do what it wants to do. Oh, you're not even hostile? Why aren't you hostile? Um, the Northrop Dispatch, designed for crowd control situation, carries and deploys kamikaze drones of various types. The bright green and yellow paint marks a low force variant, comparatively low force anyway, typically deployed as guards after an area has been cleared. These guys will deploy man hacks and things. Um, the different hacks in the game, they're, they're not all man hacks. Man hacks, if you think of Half-Life, they were basically drones with razor blades on them that would fly at you and cut you up. Those are very dangerous because they can be hard to hit um, and because they're very fast and because they will cut up your clothing and really just ruin your day a little bit if they spawn in a large enough number. Now, the Dispatch primarily will release non-lethal drones like that so they're still hacks they're like man hacks but they're not actually going to cut you up and kill you it's weird to me that he's tracking but not hostile so we're going to just go in here and see what he does oh that's why he's here because this is a barracks uh or is it a barracks i don't remember the glass door being in the barracks um it it doesn't seem to be mad at us oh god it deployed a grenade hack well that's hostile uh, so we're going to die. It's going to blow up and kill us. What, um... Grenade hat lights up menacingly. Can we run from the grenades, I wonder? We should just run away from it. Oh, it's way faster than me. Yeah, we're dead. So, um, although the it primarily will release non-lethals, it obviously can release non-lethals. Or, sorry, excuse me. It, it, it primarily releases non-lethals, but it can release lethal, um lethal hacks so there we saw uh, a robot and a grenade hack let's um try killing the robot seems unlikely we're going to be able to do it but again you know um if so if you encounter this casually run away immediately do not engage this thing um they're obviously very dangerous um and the reason that this is here is because it's in a um barracks Barracks is a very valuable, desirable location, which is why I'm going to try to kill it with our gun. I would not recommend that if you were playing this casually. Your instinct should be to close this door and run away as quickly as possible. But for funsies, we're going to try to uh, to kill this thing. So we're going to shift to running. We're just going to shoot it. Um, I imagine we're going to do virtually no damage at all to it. We hit it for 60 damage. Uh, severely injured. Oh. Oh, you're dead. Oh my god, they're way more killable than I thought. I've never tried to shoot one. I've always just left. Um, they usually spawn in pairs, though. <laughs> so let's uh, be careful here. Step, yes. Peek. Hello, other <laughs> other drone. Um, what we're going to do is back up. Because I don't think they release hacks unless they see you. So we're just going to hang out and see if it comes into view of us. We hear it moving around. Just waiting to see if it would come up and be visible. It's, it, it, there we go. Okay. Fire. No, aim at the dispatch. Oh, I can't. It would hit the terminal. Um. Yeah, let's just move up and shoot. Still can't shoot it, huh? Uh, we're just going to try to kill it. I'm surprised at uh, how much damage our gun is doing to it. I thought it was more heavily armored than that can't believe how easily they died um so maybe if you encounter them casually this is why i was just playing around we seem to see another one no that's just because it's dead it hasn't updated um this is why i'm playing around because honestly if that were me i would run away as quickly as humanly possible because i've never really engaged them before um, but i thought i would at least illustrate what they do um really surprised it went down as easy as it did now, the benefit of killing these, apparently, is that it gives you a crap ton of hacks. These can be activated to be deployed. They, oh my god, they weigh so much. Ten of them weigh 100 pounds, so they're 10 pounds each, huh? I actually pictured them much lighter and smaller than that. Um, and these are functionally explosive, so what we could do is, uh, if we saw a horde of enemies, we could stand nearby, activate one of these, and let it fly off at the enemy. Problem is... Um, they explode, and explosions have enormous blast radiuses. I do plan to do an episode specifically about explosives. 
where we will talk about each ex many of the explosives in detail about their range and, and generally how, how effective they are. Casually, I never use them uh, because they're extremely, extremely dangerous. We'll take some. We'll take all of them, actually. 250. So we'll lose a lot of stamina walking around. That's not really going to work. Um, unfortunately, the other one... Oh, heavy disposable battery as well. Unfortunately, the other one fell on the tile of rubble, so we'd have to clear out the rubble to get access to its body. We're just going to see if we can walk these upstairs without basically collapsing under the weight of them. And we're gonna see about dumping these in our trunk or something. They're a little heavy. I'm gonna just drop, drop them. I actually don't care about them that much. Keep the C4, keep five of the grenade hacks. Let's rest, get our stamina back, and now we should be comfortable enough to go back up. Yeah, I don't, I don't use explosives in my casual playthrough because they're so damaging and, and such a, a big risk to yourself. Um, so I generally do not use them. Can't believe those robots went down so easily. I've been so afraid of those things. Uh, every time I see them, I just leave them alone because I'm afraid they'll wreck me. Um, and you saw how easily that is possible. You saw that it deployed a single grenade hack and that was enough to kill us. So obviously a very high risk situation. But the fact that we were able to kill them means we now have access to the la or the uh, barracks, which is an incredibly valuable location inside of the... Um, no, we're going to put the helmet back on. Inside of the lab, the barracks is one of my favorite locations. So now we have the opportunity to go loot the barracks. Now, the other thing to note here is that most of the time, those will not be able to freely come out. The barracks, like the prisoner containment, has a sealed door. God, I'm so sick of this smoke. Um, it has a sealed door that needs to be picked through, but there is a variant of the barracks that spawns open like that. So even though it's normally sealed up, this time it was not. And because it wasn't sealed up, it lets the, the uh, robots out. The robots did not break down the door. It was generated that way so that you would be able to get in the lab or into the barracks. So we go down. This is just a layout for the barracks. And in fact, it's open all the way inside here, um, which is also unusual. So usually this is sealed up and this is sealed up. So in order to get in, you have to pickaxe through the doors and the walls and whatnot. Since this particular layout spawned open, the enemies inside were able to come out. Now. This time it was the robots. I have seen it with the giant naked mole rat, and I've seen it with hulks, um, zombie hulks spawning in here. So you can find these open, and it makes it much more dangerous because like we did, we just opened the door, and suddenly there's a robot right here. Very scary. Um, so it can be very dangerous. Um, this is also the only layout that spawns with the corpses, as far as I know. So here we have some corpses um, that are full that have clothing on them. So we're going to step inside, and we're going to be real careful as we approach this door. And the reason for that is because there's usually a turret right here. Now, it looks like the turret may have been destroyed, but we don't know that for sure. So we're going to just be real, real careful. Um, and peek. Yeah, no turret. That's interesting. So maybe this one just doesn't spawn with a turret. Um, so let's... Um, we should probably call the episode. We'll talk about the barracks in detail probably do want to clear this out if you had the opportunity you would clear out the rubble to get access to the other hacks um, but again i don't really use them so in the next episode we'll talk about barracks uh, and armories or the magazine i believe is what this is called it's not actually called the armory but um yeah very very valuable location probably one of the most valuable locations in the lab i would say the library is probably something I'm more interested in and uh, the CBM locations can be pretty good but the barracks is probably the all-around best value you're going to find in the lab so let's go ahead and save and in the next episode we'll talk about that once again if you understand why my character's vision radius has been reduced please let me know uh, that would be very helpful to me I can't think of any reason why that would be and it's it's I it honestly it's just one of those pride things I get frustrated when I don't understand something so yeah, let me know if you know. I know some of the dev team watches. Let me know why that's happening. Because uh, that's frustrating, especially because I just told all these people 
who you know some of which are new players that they can safely um proceed that way and uh based on what we've been seeing i would encourage you if you're a new player and you don't have night vision goggles or something like that i wouldn't even engage the turrets i would stay away from them um until i had a higher marksmanship and stuff and could safely shoot them from the darkness because currently at level zero rifles and now i think we have level one marksmen uh scroll down please what's our marksman at we have one marksman and zero rifles at our current skill level, we shouldn't be engaging the turrets at all unless we can safely shoot them and guarantee a kill from the darkness. And based on our range issues and the fact that we can't really see in the dark, I would encourage you not to, to engage the turrets at all until you raise your skills and can safely kill them from the darkness. So, interesting. We also learned that we can kill robots, uh, or at least the dispatch, um, pretty easily. We're lucky they didn't deploy any more hacks after that, though. And to be fair, that was after I saved Scummed. Um, so if you were in this casual playthrough, again, I would recommend running away. But uh, if you can engage them from far enough away and they can't see you, looks like you can pretty easily kill them. Uh, so yeah, that's um, interesting. Anyway, let's call the episode. So for now, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. I'll be back, of course, with more Cataclysm tutorial stuff in the near future, and I'll see you next time.